In part one, we disassembled the Sony CCD F500E. We also explored the CCD sensor inside the camcorder and how it worked. And finally, we recapped one half of the camcorder. More specifically, the lens side of the camcorder and its capacitors, which were leaking and all needed to be replaced. In this video, we'll be focusing on the main boards with the recapping process and also explore how the video 8 tape works on a camcorder. So, let's begin part two. So let's now work on the main board which also houses the cassette tape recorder. There are two boards which are sandwiched together, held down by screws which we need to remove. With all the screws now removed, we can now unclip the boards which will allow us to lift the first board and remove the power cable. And then slowly remove the power board and its attached ribbon cable. We can then unclip the two clips, which will free the second board. So, with all the screws now removed, we now have better access to both boards. The problem we have is that this board is soldered to the board underneath. Let me show you. So this is the ribbon cable and it's soldered directly both to each other. So that makes things a little bit more tricky. But what makes it even more tricky is that the this board is also soldered down here too. So when I want to recap the board underneath, I will only be able to recap it like that without damaging the ribbon cable. There's also caps underneath these sections here so it's going to make it even more difficult um yeah it's going to be a bit of a difficult process more difficult than part one but we're here for a challenge so let's go for it and let's recap both of these bolts one by one we're going to remove all the leaky caps from the board With the majority of the caps removed, we are going to clean the board with IPA and an anti-static brush, removing all the old corrosion and cap juice on the board. And any corrosion that's stuck to the board, we're going to slowly scrape it away, carefully, without damaging the board. Next, we are going to remove all the old solder and the capacitor legs that are still attached to the board. We do this by first adding flux to the board and then adding fresh new solder to each pad. We then use solder braid to wick up all the old solder, making the pads good as new. And again, give the pads a clean with IPA. Next, we're going to remove this shield, which holds additional capacitors inside, but is soldered to the other side of the board. By wicking up the old solder, the shield comes off with ease. And do the same process as before. With the caps leaking, this can cause the pads to be very weak and can rip off pretty easily. So be very careful when removing them. Here is a good example of the corrosion that has eaten away the solder mask and is now showing the exposed copper. To fix this, I will put new solder mask over it to protect it. For the rip pads, I repair them by soldering a new wire to the trace they're connected to and protect the new trace by applying solder mask to protect it. We now move on to the second board underneath which controls the cassette recorder. 
And again, we see the same leaky caps on the board, which we have to deal with. And also remove the metal shields to reveal additional caps, which we need to remove too. With the caps now removed, we have to now remove the two shields, which are soldered on the other side of the board. When the shields were removed, two different types of capacitors were revealed. The first is our common service mount capacitor, and the others were audio capacitors. These were particularly difficult to remove due to the corrosion which had gone through to the other side of the board. First, I tried to clean the corrosion with IPA, and then used a soldering iron and mixed new solder with the old solder. However, this proved to be very difficult. Eventually I decided to remove the capacitors by twisting them off. As you can see the extent of the corrosion that is on the board and on the capacitors. And to remove the legs I placed the soldering iron with fresh solder which made the removal process really easy. With all the capacitors now removed, I again used IPA to clean this board with an anti-static brush and remove all the old solder and wick it up with solder braid. And finally, give the board a final clean. So, with both boards now clean, let's now discuss about the Video 8 tape media that is used in the CCD F500E. The CCD F500 uses the 8mm video format more specifically, Video 8. These are magnetic tapes which were very popular during the late 80s and 90s. There are various versions of the Video 8 tape which were released by various companies. The version here is the Sony MP standard metal tape which maintains high RF output even after 200 repeated playbacks. Inside the recorder we can see a large tilted metal head. Now, the method used to record onto a magnetic tape is called helical scan recording, and helical scan records high frequency signals onto a slow moving tape. The tape is positioned at an angle where a single frame is recorded diagonally across the tape. Recorded tracks are at a parallel to each other, but at an angle to the edge of the tape. This allows for more data to be stored onto the tape. Now the Video 8 tape would eventually be replaced with the Hi8 tape and eventually in the late 90s with the Digital 8 tape which uses a similar method for recording but the main difference is compared to analog recording done on Video 8, Digital 8 is fully digital. So now that all the old caps are off, we can now focus on soldering the new ones to the boards. Before I took the caps off the boards, I took multiple images of all the caps around each board. This gives me a reference of all the caps and the values required when soldering the new caps to the boards. In total, 45 brand new capacitors will need to be installed on the first board. One by one, I installed each capacitor and even tried different methods from using a soldering iron and an hot air rework station. However, I found using a soldering iron was much easier and safer than using an hot air rework station. And any surface mount capacitors which couldn't be sourced was replaced with through hole capacitors instead. And with the first board recapped, we now recap the second board.
so we've got a bit of a problem because these three caps here are through hole capacitors they are but they have a very unusual value of 82 microfarads they do um i was only able to get 82 microfarads at 25 volts but they're slightly bigger than what the originals are and those are the only kind of values i can actually find so what i might have to do is forget about the shield that was originally there leave it off but then have the uh, capacitors basically lay on the PCB instead, which might actually help with the actual PCB going back into its original position once the reassembly happens again. So with the through hole capacitors now in place, we can now solder them to the board. And with the second board now recapped, we can now reinstall the shields. And with the shields now installed, I give the board a clean before proceeding to the next stage, reinstalling the other shields on the other side of the board. With all the shields back on, we now have one final thing to repair, and that's the power board ribbon cable that connects to the main board. However, the ribbon cable was heavily corroded and it needs a replacement. I will be using wire as its replacement, removing the old damaged ribbon cable and soldering each wire to each contact. And we'll be using super glue to keep the wires together and neat. As I will be using wire now, I no longer need the ribbon cable connector. However, later down the line, I do plan on reinstalling it. So, with care and time, I start removing the connector by using a low airspeed and temperature on my hot air rework station to remove it from the board. Then I clean the pads with solder braid and IPA. And finally, install the new wires one by one. And finally, I check that each wire is making a proper connection using a multimeter. And now, it's time for reassembly. And finally, screwing down the ground cables. So we've completed the recapping process for the main boards on the camcorder and in the final part we'll be recapping the final two boards on the CCD F500, more specifically the record and viewfinder boards and we'll also explore how the viewfinder works. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and until next time, bye for now.